Unit 4, Lesson 5, Solving Quadratic Applications Algebraically. So yesterday, or in the previous lesson, we used graphs of quadratics to answer application problems. Today, we will apply our algebraic knowledge of quadratics to solve these same problems. Okay. So the, remember, the graph of the quadratic is a parabola. And there are some key points on the parabola that tells us some important information. And these key points are the vertex. Okay, what does the vertex tell us? Well, it tells us uh, the maximum or the minimum point. Okay, we also have a y-intercept, which usually tells us our uh, initial value or starting point. And remember, the y-intercept is a point where x equals 0. Okay, it's the y-axis. It's on along the y-axis. And x-intercepts are also key points that tells us important information. And the x-intercepts are when y equals 0. Okay, so let's look at example number one. A rectangle has dimensions 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 5. Its area is 1,150 centimeters squared. What are its dimensions? So the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay. And we know the area given to us is 1,150 centimeters squared. And the length, we can say 3x plus 1 is the length. And the other side of my rectangle is 2x minus 5, and that's going to be our width. So the length is here, 3x plus 1, and the width is 2x minus 5. Okay, so we have a quadratic equation now. So we get, we're going to solve for x so that we can find these dimensions. What, what is the length? What is the width? What is that value of x going to be? So let's expand the left side. So we have 1150 on the left. We're going to, sorry, expand the right side. So we're going to expand the right side. Uh, so if we expand this distributed property, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times minus 5 is minus 15x. Then we have 1 times 2x, which is 2. And then 1 times minus 5, which is minus 5. Okay, and if we simplify that a little bit, we would get uh, 1150 equals 6x squared uh, minus 13x minus 5. Okay, now remember when we're solving equations, we have to rearrange that one side of the equation is equal to 0. And when we do that, we can then use the quadratic formula. So let's write a quick note here. We're going to rearrange to make one side equal to zero so we can use the quadratic formula okay so that means we're going to subtract 1150 from both sides of the equation so zero equals 6x squared minus 13x minus 5 minus 1150 okay and when we simplify that, we get 0 equals 6x squared minus 13x, and minus 5 and minus 1150 becomes minus 1155. And now we have a quadratic equation in standard form equal to 0, where we can read our a value, our b value, and our c value. Okay, if you did not rearrange it, then you couldn't use the quadratic formula right away because you'd have end up having something different. Okay, so if I apply the quadratic formula, so we're going to say x is equal to negative of b, so negative of negative 13, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so it's negative 13 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 6, times c, which is negative 1155. So don't forget your negative signs, or your minus signs. And all of this is divided by... 2a, so 2 times 6. Okay, and then so x is equal to, simplify this a little bit, so 13, so negative, negative 13 is positive 13, plus or minus, so 13 squared is 169, 4 times 6 times 1155 is, and you have double negative, so you get a positive, so 169 plus, uh, this becomes 27, 7, 20. All of that's under the square root sign, and all of that's divided by 2 times 6, which is 12. 
keep going, simplifying. So 13 plus or minus uh, 169 plus 27, 720 is 27,889. Don't forget the square root sign and then divide that by 12. And then we're going to split that into two parts. And if I do the first one where you have a plus, your answer is going to be x equals positive 15. And if you do the one with minus the square root, you're going to get an answer of x equals negative 12.8. And we're going to reject this one because we cannot have negative dimensions. So reject because no negative dimensions. Okay, so if x is the x equals 15 is the solution we want. So we're going to say uh, x is equal to 15. Therefore, dimensions are so if we take the first bracket, the first fat length, 3x plus 1, we get 3 times 15 plus 1, which is equal to 46. And the other dimension is 2x minus 5. So we substitute x 2 times 15 minus 5, we get 20. Okay, and you just want to double check that you're correct. So you check, multiply your dimensions, uh, 46 times 25, and you get 1150, which is the area originally given to us in the question. Okay, remember visuals are always important so that for understanding. So if I draw a little sketch here, your parabola would look something like this, where you have uh, your y value at 1150. And your point here on the right here is x equals 15. And your point here on the left, which is negative 12.8. And we reject the negative number and we keep the positive number. Okay. So let's look at another example, example number two. The path of a basketball after it's thrown from a height of 1.5 meters above the ground is given by the following equation, h, this one right here where height is, in, is h and in meters, and d is the horizontal distance in meters. So part a, how far has the ball traveled horizontally to the nearest tenth of a meter when it lands on the ground? So when it lands on the ground, that means h is equal to 0. Okay, so you're going to find x intercepts. You're gonna find, uh, well, instead of x intercepts, we're going to call them d intercepts. And then part B, find the horizontal distance when the basketball is at a height of 4.5 meters above the ground. Okay, so let's do a quick little sketch for our understanding of the situation. So we're going to sketch h equals negative uh, 0 0.25 d squared plus 2d plus 1.5. And so the first thing we should notice is the negative, so the negative a value means that the graph is going to open down. Okay, And we have the 1.5, which will be our y-intercept. So here's a quick little sketch. D and h. And we have a 1.5 for our y-intercept. And we're looking for a basketball. When is the basketball going to reach the 4.5 meters in part B? So we're asked, when is the ball, basketball going to reach that 4.5 meters above the ground? So our situation might look something like this. OK. So we don't know what the x-intercepts are yet. We don't know the maximum point. Uh, so we got to work on finding some of these values. So we're going to find the x-intercepts first. So part A, we're going to find the x-intercepts. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. If you've got the quadratic formula, here it is. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Okay. Now this time we are going to uh, change that x. We're going to make that d because we're using a different variable. Okay. So here we have... Uh, d equals uh, 
negative of negative b, so negative 2. Sorry, yeah, b is positive 2, so negative b would be negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 plus or minus square root of b squared, so it's 2 squared, minus 4 times a, a is going to be negative 0 0.25, and times c, which is 1.5. All of that's divided by 2a, so 2 times negative 0 0.25. We'll watch, be careful with the signs now. Simplifying this, we get negative 2 plus or minus, uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times negative 0.25 plus times 1.5 gives me plus 1.5. And then we divide that by uh, 2 times negative 0.25 is negative 0.5. Okay, keep simplifying. We get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5.5. 5. 5. So 4 plus 1.5 is 5.5, .5, divided by negative 0 0.5. Okay, so that's going to give us two possible answers for D. So again, D is going to be, uh, so D is going to be equal to negative 2 plus 5.5 over negative 0 0.5, or d will be equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 5.5 over negative 0.5. And so one answer will give us negative 0 0.69, and the other answer will give us uh, 8.69, positive 8.69. So we're going to reject the negative one because it doesn't make any sense in the context of our problem. We don't deal with that negative horizontal distance. We're going to deal with the 8.69. So what does that mean? Question, how far has the ball traveled horizontally to the nearest tenth of a meter when it lands on the ground? It has traveled 8.69 meters away. So right here, when it lands on the ground, is 8.69 meters. All right, so part B asks us to find how far, uh, when does, uh, far, what horizontal distance uh, does the ball reach when the ball's height is at 4.5 meters. Okay, so that means we want a distance. So the distance is, sorry, height is going to be h. Height's going to be 4.5 meters. So I'm going to put this into the equation for height. So 4.5 meters is equal to the rest of the equation, which is negative 0.25d squared plus 2d plus 1.5. So here I'm going to rearrange. Okay, and if I rearrange that, I get zero. Rearrange means I want one side of my equation to be zero, right? That's the only way I'm going to solve this equation if one side is equal to zero. So to get that zero, I have to subtract 4.5 from both sides. So subtracting 4.5 on the left gives me a zero, and if I do it on the right, it changes my equation on the right. So here we go, and minus 4.5 there at the end. And then I simplify, collect the like terms. 1.5 minus 4.5 would be negative 3. Okay, so d is equal to quadratic formula. This is going to be your a, the negative 0.25, positive 2 is going to be your b, and minus 3 is going to be your c. So let's solve for that d value. So the negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 0.25, times c, which is negative 3. So don't forget the negative. All divided by 2a, so 2 times negative 0 0.25. Okay, so let's simplify. So d equals negative 2 plus or minus. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 0 0.25 times negative 3 turns out to be minus 3. So here, 4 minus 3, all that's square rooted. In the bottom, I have negative 0.5. Okay, if I simplify that, I get negative 2 plus or minus, 4 minus 3 is 1, so the square root of 1 over negative 0 0.5. And so that leaves me with two possibilities. It's negative 2 plus, or, plus 1, or the square root of 1 is 1, over negative 0.5. Or it could be d equals negative 2 minus 1 over negative 0.5. Or you take both answers, right? So in this first one, d is equal to? 2. And in the second one, d is equal to 6. So what that means is the ball is 4.5 meters above the ground at 2 meters and at 6 meters of horizontal distance. 
So let's write concluding statement. So for part A, therefore, the ball lands on the ground 8.69 meters away. And for part B, the ball is 4.5 meters above the ground at 2 meters and 6 meters of horizontal distance. Okay, so again, visually what that means is if I go back to my sketch, what that means is here is my 4.5 meter line, this guy right here. So where does it cross my graph? Right there at that point and right there at that point. So the first one is going to be the smaller number at 2 meters, and this one is going to be the other number, 6 meters. And that's where my ball is reaching a height of 4.5 meters. Okay, so there are a couple more examples in this section left to go. I'm going to do the other two examples in a different video, so I'm just making this video shorter. And so stay tuned for the next part.